I don't want to get too hot in here. If you get too hot, you'll be the fell out on me, and you'll be sleeping instead of, instead of staying awake, and I sure don't want that. And it's a wonderful evening. I hope you've had a good afternoon. Maybe you got some stuff done. Our, our family stayed till oh, probably 2 or 2.30, and they all went, went, went away. <laughs> and uh, Kevin, he, he stayed, and him and Noah stayed with us. And they, of course, we, we, we got to have them every Sunday. Amen. But anyway, I tell you what. All right, we're going to pray, and then we're going to sing number 191. 191, and count your blessings. Before we, before we pray or sing, this is a thank you note from uh, uh, Brian and Hannah. Uh, it says, uh, uh, thank each and every one for the gifts and the love and the, uh, shown to our little girl. Thank you for the wonderful shower. It was fun, and we enjoyed it. We couldn't uh, have picked a better church family for her to be raised in. We want to raise her up for the Lord and for her to get saved in an early age. Amen, amen. Love, Brian, Hannah, and baby Willa. And so uh, uh, I think she's getting spoiled already. Yeah, we got a bunch of spoiled ones around here, okay? And, uh, but that's okay. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. All right, well, let's pray. Our Father, we thank you once again that we can be here in, in this place tonight. So thankful, dear God, that uh, uh, we have uh, uh, the privilege and the honor to be in church. And as we think tonight, Lord, about those around the world who have to hide out just to meet just for a little bit for fear of their lives. And uh, so, Lord, we thank you for our freedom here in America. Help us not to take it for granted, dear God. Uh, there may come a day that freedom may not be here. But as long as we can, Lord, help us to take advantage of the liberty we have in sharing the gospel to a lost and dying world. Please, God, bless the service tonight. Bless those, Lord, who are tuned in by live stream. I pray, God, that they'll enjoy the service and get some help in it. And we ask you to do it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's all stand and sing. 191. over a few pages to 195, 195, once again we'll sing the first, second, and last of glory to his name, amen, 195, yes, Yeah. 
that is a blessing. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Glory to his name. All right, just want to uh, remind you once again, if you're going to read your Bible through this year, which I think you ought to do every year, at least one time, and uh, we have some uh, daily devotional books up here. And that'll, you'll enjoy the daily devotion. Also, it'll give you the verses to read, to read the Bible through in one year. I won't ask for this because I uh, don't want to embarrass anyone, but uh, uh, you, you'd be surprised how, how few Christians have read the, their Bible through. And I think one of the reasons that happens is because there are some spaces in the Bible that you can't, hard, you know, you don't quite understand what's going on, or maybe they got those long names. Amen. So one year I took and uh, I had uh, the Bible on cassette, and uh, Alexander Scorby was reading the Bible through, and I'm gonna tell you what it really helped me because when it got to those those names there, that's uh, pretty well. Uh, out of my vocabulary, he just, it was nothing to him. And so uh, I followed him along as he read. So uh, if you can get, uh, get him on cassette tape and read along, that'd be a big, big blessing to you, okay? And, uh, but anyway, all right, they're up here if you want one. And then uh, I haven't even asked her about this. This concerns Miss Judy over here. And uh, she decorates the building for special occasions, inside and out a lot of times. And she'll be taking all these Christmas decorations down and putting them up. And she normally has someone to help her, but she hadn't in the last uh, several months. And she hadn't, I don't know if she's asking anybody, so I'm asking for her. And so uh, if you'd like to help her, and uh, she is not a slave driver now. She will not work you to death. She'll probably do most of the work. But if you'd like to help her, uh, I know she would appreciate it. You just see her and say, Miss Judy, when are you going to be out here? Maybe come help her do that, okay? Because it's a lot of work on one person. And another thing is I don't like her here by herself. And, uh, and so uh, anyway, uh, it's not a safe world today. And, uh, but anyway, if you'll do that, is that okay, Miss Judy? Is that okay if I get somebody to get you some help? She's saying, okay, oh, she can't turn it down now. I've done it. <laughs> done, done it. And uh, all right. Well, anyway, uh, I hope the Lord will bless you this week and answer all your prayers. And so I mentioned praying to get more in the choir. I said, I'm going to quit praying because we're getting less. <laughs> of course, we're some out not because you got some throat problems. But anyway, all right, let's have the choir sing. You give them an amen every once in a while, okay?
can say about that is, Amen! <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, let us see back there. Uh, Mark, did your youngest boy bring his hat tonight? Hmm? Nicholas, you bring your hat tonight? All right, put them on, come here. Come on. Dun, 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 dun. All right, here they come. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. You got your boots on? Yes, sir. You got your gun? No, sir. Well, I'll sit at the house. I'll be right back. Oh, you, got your, <laughs> you got your horse tied up out front? Do, do you have... It's too cold. <laughs> it's just too cold. Do you have a horse at all? No horse? No horse? Under the hood. Under the hood. Horse power. Okay. Uh, well, I think we need to sing a song. You know that song, Get Along Little Doggy? You don't know that song, Get Along Little Doggy? Great. Now, how about I'm a poor wayfaring stranger? Y'all know, do y'all know Jingle Bells? <laughs> All right, let's get a book. Okay. What, what, what number is that? Did you, what a day that would be? 91. All right, get a song book. Get your, there's a song book. Come over next to the microphone. All right, Noah, you come and help us. Come on. Yeah. No, no, you come on up here. All right, okay. Phoenix, you come help us. Get a songbook. Okay. That ought to be enough right there. All right, got a songbook? Turn to 91. All right, y'all need to come this way a little bit and get a bit closer to this pulpit. Okay, do y'all know this song? Somewhat. Somewhat. <laughs> Fired up, Ruth. Singing voice is bad tonight, so y'all gotta drown me out. So you gotta get a little, little, little bit more volume to it. Okay? Can you do that? It's only got two verses on it. Verse number two. All right, here we go.
this book with you. There you go. There you go. Isn't that good? Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what. Amen. We're going to go on the road and call us a, a tiny tumbling weeds. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Amen, amen. Well, I'm glad you can enjoy church. Amen. And, and uh, uh, there's a lot of preachers who do not like that, and that's okay. I don't have no problem with that. Uh, but as long as it's good and clean. And, and uh, I, 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 here's how I look at that. I think the Lord up in heaven looks down and says, hey, come here. Angel, did you see that? My, my children are enjoying themselves tonight. Amen. Amen. You know, God, God loves for his children to enjoy themselves. Right. Amen. I believe that. And, and so as long as it's clean and godly and, and stuff like that, so we thank the Lord we can do that. Appreciate you boys putting up with my voice. And uh, you got that on tape? You got it on tape. It, we can, you can get a tape for $10. And uh, we'll, we'll, let you have, we'll let you have two for $25. And <laughs> All right. Well, tonight uh, we're going to receive an other's offer for somebody in our church again, okay? And uh, if you need to know who that is, you see me after church, and I'll gladly let you know who that is. I do that sometimes not to embarrass the person who is receiving it because they don't know about it. And, uh, but I know they have a need, and we want to help them that need tonight. So if you'll do that, it'll be a blessing to them. Okay? That's, you're getting a blessing out of giving. Well if, you, well, if you do, you can be blessed all you want. Amen? All right, let's come and sing a couple of verses. Amen. All right, let's all stand once again. Turn to page 193. 193. We'll sing the first and last of Jesus and me. 193. with you. Everywhere you go, he's going with you. I tell you what, uh, uh, Dr. Bill Rice, is Bill Rice Ranch founder and he and his wife, of course, he's been gone to heaven a long, long time. And uh, he was always uh, uh, singing that song. He said, I'm glad I got Jesus with me everywhere I go. And he was a big horse man. He loved riding horses and all that kind of stuff. And he said, uh, when I get on my horse, Jesus gets on my horse with me. <laughs> Aren't you glad you get in your car? He gets in the car with you. Oh, boy, when you go to sleep tonight, he's right there with you. Amen, amen. Let's pray. Our Lord Jesus, <clears throat> thank you for being with us all the time. All the time. There's never a moment that you're not with us. Never. We thank you for that. And I pray, dear God, that tonight you'll bless this, this other's offering. 
And you, Lord, you'll bless those who give once again. And Lord, you'll bless those who, the one who received the offering, that you'll bless them also. Please, Jesus, help them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, Miss Ruth. Amen, amen. I tell you what, uh, you know, I mentioned a few moments ago about the Lord. Uh, he, he, he loves to see his children enjoying themselves. And I've been preaching in the book of Ecclesiastes and several times in that book, we've already read that God wants us to enjoy the uh, rewards of our labor. You work hard and and do right, and uh, there's nothing wrong with enjoying that, you know, what God, the rewards of that, uh, being able to uh, enjoy some pleasures in life, going places, seeing a few things. You know, the Apostle Paul, while he served Jesus, traveled all over the Mediterranean <laughs> and got to see that, that, that part of the world and at the same time carrying the gospel. Now, every once in a while, Paul wasn't in a motel, hotel. He was in jail. <laughs> but he still kept on smiling for Jesus. And I've enjoyed, I tell you, look back over my life. I, there's been some great things in my life my wife and I have enjoyed. I remember a few years ago for our anniversary, we went, we went zip lining. Yeah, we did. She wanted to go. I said, okay, honey, you will go if you want to go. And uh, now you would think because I've played sports all my life, that that would be a breeze for me. I like to kill myself. <laughs> and she, she, you'd have thought she was a pro. And that guy would say, now, you, you got to hold on, and when you get ready to stop, you just barely squeeze that thing and just, just glide right into the stand, okay? Well, the first time I did it, I didn't do nothing. I almost went through the whole stand. <laughs> well, I said, well, I'm not going to have that happen again. So from then on, I'd get about 10 feet away and just grab it. And then, of course, it jerks you about jerk your arm out of the socket and I'd pull my way up. Not Miss Baker, son. She'd slid through there. You'd have thought she was Tarzan going through there. Just <laughs> Anyway, she'd just slide right in. And uh, uh, we had our little helmets on and uh, we enjoyed ourselves. That was a great day. Uh, other folks looked at us like we was crazy. Because every time we'd get to a stand and... Uh, here, here's what we here's what we bet. We believe in gambling. If I won, she had to kiss me. If she won, I had to kiss her. Boy, I did a lot of kissing that day. <laughs> I lost on purpose. <laughs> Other folks look at us and say, "What are y'all doing?" Say, "We're we're on our anniversary. Leave us alone." <laughs> okay, all that stuff out of the way. Get your Bibles out and turn to Mark chapter four. Okay, I'm just trying to tell you, you need to enjoy life. Amen. And so there's some, well, I'll tell you why, because we're fixing to read some scripture that tells you why. 
Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, his disciples, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And uh, there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat in. Notice it says it beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I want to go back. There's a lot of preaching in here, but I want to go back up and uh, to verse number 36, the last part of verse 36. You may have this already marked in your Bible from years ago. I preached from this text years ago, and I may have even used this part here. I don't know if I did. Well, bless your heart, you're going to get it again. Uh, but anyway, it says there were also with him other little ships. So here we have the disciple uh, are in a ship. Jesus is in the ship with them. Jesus is in the hinder part uh, asleep, okay? This storm comes their way. It is such a fearful storm that uh, the waves are so high, uh, they're, uh, they're, uh, there's, the, the boat's going to sink. And they fear for their lives and they rush and wake him up and, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And so the Bible says he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. That's what Jesus can do. Amen. And, uh, but I want to look there at that part where it says, and there were also with him other little ships. And I want to take that thought tonight and preach on it for a little bit on other little ships. Other little ships. You know, the Bible has a lot to say about storms. And I believe that's because... Uh, God knows that we're going to have a lot of storms in our life. You've heard this said, and I've heard it said, and I've said this, that uh, 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 some folks are just getting out of a storm, some folks are just entering a storm, and some folks are right in the middle of a storm. In other words, if, if you have smooth sailing right now, you better praise God and thank God for it. But I'm telling you, somewhere, somewhere down the road, there's going to be a storm with your name on it. And it may come with different degrees. You know, we have, uh, when we have the hurricanes and storms, now they've got names for them. And they'll have a, it's a number four, it's a number two, it's a number three. You know, sometimes you might can handle a number one, but you might be scared to death at a number four. Are you listening to me? So the Bible has a lot to say about storms. Storms come and go, and some do more damage than others. There are some storms so severe that when it passes through, there may be a lot of uh, 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 many people killed because of it. Uh, if not that, uh, uh, millions and billions of dollars in damage, and sometimes it's such as a storm that folks can never rebuild again. So we're going to have storms like that in our life. And, and, but you know what I thought about? Th these storms can help us if we look at them very carefully. And tonight, that's what we're going to do. We're going to look tonight and, and, and preach about the, the other little ships that were in this storm. And the first thing I notice here is this. Others face the same storms as you. Here's Jesus and the disciples the disciples are wide awake. Jesus sound asleep. And, uh, and so, but I like, I like the fact that God put it in there that the ship that they were on was not the only ship in this storm. There were other ships out there caught in this storm. And here's my point, that there are others out there facing the same storm as you have faced. You know, we've been preaching through the book of Ecclesiastes and we found out that on several times already, Solomon said, there is nothing new under the sun. And by that, I'll, I'll say this about that, that uh, uh, when you face a storm, I want to tell you, there are 
others, hundreds of others who have faced a storm just like that. Now, you may not know them, may they not know you, but there's somebody out there, even maybe you know, that has faced the same storm you faced. Are you listening to me? I mean, I don't care what kind of storm it is. It could be an automobile accident where somebody loses their life. It could be a disease that uh, somebody gets that may take their life or, uh, or hamper them tremendously. It may be a loss of a job. It may be a prodigal son or daughter. I want to say to you that there are folks out there right now that have go, are going through a storm that maybe you've already been through or going through right now. I've heard people say, boy, preacher, nobody understands what I'm going through. That's not good. There are people who do understand what you're going through. You just don't know where they are. They're out there. Well, preacher, mine's unusual. Well, not that unusual because there are billions of people in the world today. You say, well, my, my marriage is in trouble. Uh, 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 my husband and wife are, don't know if we're going to make it or not. Uh, you're not. You don't have the first marriage has been in trouble. And you won't have the last. And I don't mean to, I don't say that haphazardly. It's just the truth. There are couples out there, about a thousands, having a hard time. Don't know if they're going to make it or not. And I know this, and uh, I don't know from experience, just from what I've had to deal with as a pastor. I'm telling you what, one of the most difficult storms uh, that, that a couple faces sometimes is when that couple comes to a point in their life to say, are we going to make it or not? And they're out there. And some, some sit in churches just like this. Because I'm telling they're out there. And so uh, others face the same storms as you face. I, I remember some years ago, I made this statement. I, I, I look back now, maybe I shouldn't have said it, but I didn't mean it the way they took it. There was a, uh, a death in, a, in, in, the, in this person's family, and they were really grieving over it, grieving over it, grieving over it. And months and months and months, months went by. And I was, you know, I was talking with them, trying to comfort them. And I just said it, not in me. I just said, you know, you're not the only one that's lost a, a parent. Others have too. And I didn't know this. That really hurt them. It really did. I didn't mean for it to hurt them. But it was the truth. Now, if I'd have known it's going to bring hurt, I'd have never said it. Matter of fact, I, I don't think I've said that again. But the point I'm trying to say is, it doesn't matter what storm you may face in your life, there are others out there going through the same storm. Why do you think psychologists and psychiatrists are staying, and stay, stay, stay busy? Because people are having problems. I mean, in the hospital now, there are people by the millions in hospitals facing all kinds of problems. There are little boys and girls who have cancer in, in hospitals trying to deal with that cancer. I'm saying that there's nobody here, nobody anywhere that will ever face a storm that somebody else has not faced that same storm. The point I'm trying to say is this. You're not alone in your storms. Here are these 12 men with Jesus they're out there. As far as they know, they're the only one in the. They're the only ones in the storm, huh? It's not what Elijah said. That I'm the only one standing for God, but he wasn't. God said, "You're not the only one. I got several hundred other prophets out there who have not bowed down to Baal." And so, uh, look at this. Others face the same storms as you face. There's nothing new under the sun. The second thing I see here is this. Others. Fear as you fear. Verse 38. He said here he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and they say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we what? Perish. Others fear as you fear. These men feared for their lives. Now this would not be the only time or the first time nor the second time that they would fear for their life in a storm. And so others, listen, others fear as you fear. You know, uh, sometimes you fear what you see. <laughs> These men, they, they, here they are. They, they, they see what's going on. The waters, the waves are so high, the wind is so rough that the waves are coming over the boat, into the boat. 
and they were going down on another occasion it says in the storm they were they were toiling and, and rowing in other words they were rowing real hard and so they were feared for their life can I say to you that a lot of storms are going to put some fear in us oh yeah uh, I don't know if there's a preacher out there or, or a Christian out there anywhere who could say, I've never been afraid of anything. I don't believe that. I just don't believe that. I believe that if, if a person lives long enough and goes through enough, there are going to be some things in their time, there are going to be some times in their life when things come their way that they fear it. Amen? Amen? There's been times I've been scared. There's been times I thought, boy, this, this, this is not looking good for Brother Baker. There's been times I thought, this is it, I'm going to die. Yeah, I was in an automobile, uh, automobile accident years ago at the first church, and, and uh, uh, I was going to the hospital, a lady in the church that happened, just had a baby, and I was going down to visit her and her husband, and uh, came, uh, it was just a sudden uh, uh, storm in the summertime on I-26, the speed limit there was 65, I was doing 45, it was raining so hard. I was over in the left-hand lane next to the guardrail and a little old small uh, 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 Dotson station wagon <laughs> and I came over a little hill on, on, on the interstate and there was a car stopped in the speed lane. And I wasn't speeding. And I said, oh, and I looked to my right. Thank God I could see to my right. <laughs> and it was the cars beside me. I couldn't have hit the guard. I, I just sort of pumped my brakes and said, this is it. And I hit the back of that car, and my head hit the windshield, busted the windshield. I fell over on the floor. I reached up here, and I felt, I felt something. I said, oh, no, that's my skull. That's my brains. <laughs> and it was the glass from the windshield. Whoo! And I thought, boy, I sh what you, uh, suppose an 18-wheeler come across that. They don't slow down for rain. I thought, boy, if an 18-wheeler comes over that hill doing the speed limit, and here I sit, I'm dead. But I got out of the car, nothing wrong with me. But, boy, when I did this, I thought, this is it, I'm going to die. I was scared. It scared me. And when I hit that windshield, I thought, boy, I've got a bad head injury. It's just glass. <laughs> now, later on, when things got calm, everything's okay, somebody said, preach, it wasn't your brain. <laughs> You know what I mean by that? You ever been fearful? Almost drowned as a teenager. <coughs> I was scared. Had it not been for it had it not been for God having a, a trained lifeguard there with us, I'd have drowned that day. It scared me. It scared me. Even, even times I've been saved, I've been scared. When I 95 was being built, Miss Baker and I were. It was active, think, during the Christmas time. <coughs> Excuse me. We were coming down uh, Highway uh, uh, 15, and the uh, interstate hadn't been completed here yet. <clears throat> and Sherry had Kevin in her lap. Jay and Marie was in the back seat. <coughs> I think they were asleep. And uh, uh, we were coming down the road, Chute Lane Road 15. I look up, and here's one of those loaded rock trucks passing another one. And I, I think he's going to get over. He's going to get back in. But he didn't. Son, he just kept coming. And Sherry said, I, now, I'm acting like it's, it, I'm talking about maybe five to seven seconds. I'm doing a speed limit. Here comes that truck. And the grass is about this high on the side of the road. And Sherry said, Howard, 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 Howard. And I just do like this, go off the road. The time I get off the road, that loaded rock truck comes by us. And so I look in my mirror and there's a car right behind me, follow me down through there. Finally, we got down the road. I just, we just, I had to pull over. She's a crying. I scream. Babies are screaming. The car behind me pulled over and said, I'm sure glad you didn't hit your brakes. I was scared that day. My whole family could have been killed that day. Don't tell me. I thought, you see, that's not the first time. I'm not the only one that's had almost accident. You ever had some? Huh? There's been a 
Thousands upon thousands of parents who've got a phone call at some time in the day or night, we need to, you need to get to the hospital, there's been an accident. You say, oh no, what is it? And you get the bad news. Maybe, they're, maybe they, they, were, uh, they were killed in it or hurt bad. And so it's a fearful time. Others fear as you fear. So you fear what you see sometimes. And can I say this also? <coughs> that you fear what you think. <laughs> you fear what you think. You go to the doctor. And the doctor says, <coughs> from what we can see here, there's a possibility, there's something in there we don't, we don't know quite what it is, and you need to come back in a couple of days. And what do you think? It's, you think the worst. What's it going to be? This is it. It's almost like you've talked yourself into this it. I'm guilty. Huh? You fear what you believe. This is what, this is what could happen. And so sometimes that fear, and then sometimes when things do happen, you fear, well, it's going to get worse. It may not get worse, but it may. But you fear what you think. Huh? Uh, you know, sometimes that's why sometimes couples don't want each other out of their sight for their fear. <laughs> well, they might speak to somebody else. Come on now. I can't let my kids go anywhere because they may get hurt. I'm telling you what, there's going to be times you can't fear what you think. Huh? Teach your kids to be careful. You be careful. Amen. Husbands be careful. Wives be careful. Children be careful. But don't be thinking the worst about everything. Amen. It'll drive you nuts. It really will. So you fear what you see. You fear what you think. But you know what I thought about this? The Holy Spirit has no fear. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit is in you. It's in me. It's, he lives in us. And there's no fear in the Holy Spirit. And, and so what we need to learn to do, we don't do much of it, but we need to learn to say, Holy Spirit, would you calm me in this storm? And he will. They woke Jesus up and he calmed the storm. And you'd have thought that would have calmed them. But then they got, they got a little more fearful because they said, man, we've never seen anything like this. And so, first of all, others face the same storm as you. Others fear the same as you, sometimes worse, sometimes more. And then number three is, others are as faithless as you. They were faithless. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So others are as faithless as you. Have you ever been faithless? I don't know if you have or not, but there's been times in my life where I don't know if I had any faith at all or little faith. Others are as faithless as you. I'll give you an example. Lazarus had died. They had sent word for Jesus. Martha and Mary, uh, uh, our, your friend, our brother Lazarus is dying. You got to come, you got to come. And Jesus deliberately, deliberately uh, delayed his coming. And when he got there, they said to him, Lord, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died if you'd been here. And Jesus said, I have the resurrection and the life. In other words, they were faithless. In other words, they, they said, you know, if you'd been here, you ever been faithless? Boy, I have. Can I say this to you? If you do have faith, and I thank God you do, your faith can often help others who have weak faith. In other words, when you, when you have faith and you're in your storm and you're trusting God and God's strengthening you and guiding you and protecting you and helping you when, you, when he does that for you and you get through that storm, your faith in God can help encourage others who may have little faith. For example, let's just say here that uh, uh, here's a mother who's, uh, who's experienced a situation with her child and, and she has trusted God through this and God has blessed her. And then there's another mother whose child has the same thing, 
This one mother can go to her and say, listen, I got to pray for you. I've been through that. And the Lord helped me. I want to say to you that God is able to get you through this. You see, her faith can help her faith. You know, the Bible says we're to edify one another. It says that. What does that mean? That means build up, pick up. Do you realize as we, as we go through our Christian life, there are going to be a lot of Christians who lose faith and say, I can't finish, I can't finish. And others help them. I was watching a, a, uh, the Olympics years ago, and there was this p- particular runner uh, in, a, in the 27-mile uh, uh, marathon. And uh, the race was, had been already finished by many other, any other, many other runners. But there was one runner who had somewhere on the, on, the, on the track had hurt their leg real bad, and they, it was like two hours later this runner came into the Colosseum and was barely making it. And and so some of the other runners who saw that were waiting and waiting. And when they got in the, and this runner fell down twice, maybe 100 yards from the finish line. They go out there and they pick the runner up, put the runner under their arms and help, help the runner get across. And they couldn't do it. They had to stop right when they got to the finish line. It wouldn't count. And though the runner finished dead last, Right across the line they went with the help of others. There are a lot of Christians facing storms right now. A lot of Christians are having circumstances in their life and they need your faith. They need your faith. Amen? There will be times that I need your faith. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you what. I've told this and I don't mean it. I I mean it honestly. I I said, you know, sometimes I look at the church that God allowed me to pastor and there's been many times that you have had more faith than me. There have been times I thought, Lord, I don't know if I don't know about this. I don't know about this. And yet here, here you come as a church family. Preacher, let's do it. <laughs> we can do it. I say, okay. <laughs> come on now. Sometimes the followers can encourage, encourage the leaders. Sometimes the leaders need help. Amen. Amen. You children sometimes can encourage your mom and dad. Okay, dad, we can do it. Okay, mom, let's do it. Sometimes children, they, they have more courage than we got. Yes, Amen. Amen. So others face the same storms you face. Others have the same fears you have. Others are, are as faithless as you are. And uh, edify one another. And then last of all, others are as fascinated as you when God steps in. Others are as fascinated as you when God steps in. Look what he says here in verse 41. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? They're fascinated by this. Fascinated. What manner of man is this? Now, we know he wasn't just a man. He's the God man. Fascinated. Have you ever been, uh, uh, been around somebody that's been through a storm and they start talking about how God intervened? Huh? You ever been around somebody who gives a testimony and say, you know, uh, uh, sometime back, maybe been a month ago or years ago, I was going, I had this storm in my life and, and here's what happened. Oh, I'm telling you what, that, that blesses my heart. And you, you others are fascinated as, as you are when God steps in. That's why when God blesses you and helps you through a situation, testify about that. Amen. Why? Because uh, it, it fascinated you, it'll fascinate them. <laughs> At that time, I, I, I whipped off the road like that and, and had to sit there. I, I could have said, well, that's because I got good reflexes. That had been dumb. I don't know, I just turned, I just did this and I was off the road, didn't have time, to, much more time to think. And so I'm glad that you see that was God stepping in. Amen. That time that I, that I was going under the water, I mean the water was coming over my face and I, was, I couldn't get up and I'm, I'm going down and I don't know where an arm came and re- reached down, picked me up and took me to safety. That's fascinating, Amen. amen. <laughs> That's God doing that. God spared my life. 
So others are fascinated as you when God steps in. Don't you love to hear people testify what God has done in their life? The little Wilcox baby over here in Georgia, that was, uh, they thought the baby was not going to live. <laughs> and it, it's fascinating that now that baby is okay and, and going to be normal. It's, are you listening to me? It's fa- and I like it when doctors, when doctors say, we've done all we can do is in God's hands now. I wish every doctor would say that because that's all they can do is treat. <laughs> little ships are no match for a big storm. Amen? Amen? Can I say this? You and I are no match for our storms. Amen. I'm no match for the storms in my life, no matter where they come from and what, what they're involved in. It could be a category one or a category four. I'm not able, I'm not able to handle any storm in my life. A big storm will take me down every time. It'll take you down too. But listen to this now. Big storms are no match for our big God. <laughs> hey, Lord, Lord, don't you, don't you care we perish? We're going to perish, Lord. We're going down. The storm's raging. And Jesus gets up and says, oh, my let me take care of this. <laughs> Peace, be still. And the disciples, whoo, whoo. We've never, ever seen anything like this. You ever experienced that? Huh? That only something that only God can do? I mean, God can do it. How about this? Our, our storms are no match for our big God. Jesus stepped in. Listen now. Jesus stepped in in spite of their fear and faithlessness. They were full of fear and no faith. And he still stepped in. Only God can do that. Oh, now you, you hear these televangelists all the time. They say, well, you got to have faith in God. If you don't have any faith, God can't do anything for you. If you don't have any faith, God can't bless you. He did there, didn't he? God understands our, huma- uh, our, our humanity. And there are going to be times in your life where you're going to be full of fear and little or no faith. But still, our great God says, you know, Jesus said, fellas, why are you so fearful, uh, uh, fearful and so faithless? He knew why. He said, I'll take care of it for you. And he did. Many times in my life, many times in your life maybe, when I was fearful and had little or no faith, God stepped right in and took care of it. You know, the Bible talks about when you don't know how to pray or what to pray, the Holy Spirit prays for you. Aren't you glad of that? You know why the Holy Spirit can do that? Because he's God. (laughs) The Holy Spirit is just as much God as Jesus is and God the Father. And so the Holy Spirit can do for you what Jesus did for them. Huh? He really can. I thought about this, Brother Tommy. The Apostle Paul in his journeys, he was stoned, left for dead, in prison, whipped almost to death, okay? And yet in every one of those situations, God rescued him. He was bit by a poisonous snake, shook the snake off, and they saw that, and guess what? They were fascinated. <laughs> they said they thought he was a god. They thought that Saul or Paul was a god. And, and so God protected, God watched over Paul's life every, all three journeys, even in, uh, he, he talks about all those perils he was in, peril here, and all of that. In every situation, God stepped in and helped Paul. But watch what God allowed to happen. Here's Paul, he's, 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 a, he's a prisoner, he's a, in a Roman prison, and they, they come to him and said, Paul, Tomorrow is going to be the day they're going to execute you. And they did. He said, the time of my departure is at hand. I've I've, I've finished, I've fought, I've done done what God's told me to do, and I'm fixing to depart here. And he cut his head off. Do you know what? That was in the will of God. Now here's my point. There's going to come a time in your life that something, sometime, somewhere, unless Jesus comes, 
you're going to face that. You're going to face that. And when that time comes, I think, I believe that the, the Apostle Paul knew the 23rd Psalm. Huh? You think he knew it? Probably did real well. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He continues it all the way through. And so, uh, tonight, understand this. You will never face anything that somebody else has not faced or maybe may be facing it at the very same time. Very same time. Uh, years ago, when we were up in pastor school in, in Hammond, Indiana, this gigantic church, <clears throat> uh, uh, the, one of the associate pastors, you know what, his, you know what his, his, his position was, one of the associate pastors, was hospital visitation. That's all he did, okay? He said it would be nothing for him to visit, visit 100 to 150 people a, a week in the hospital. A week. Church was so large. He said, Pastor House can't he can't pass this church and visit all of them. He said, I'd start early in the morning, visit all day. Hospital, 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 hospital. That was his that was his position. Why I'm saying this is he said, I'd go to this hospital and visit this visit this member, go to another hospital, and this member would have the same thing that member had. And he would say, you know, brother and sister so-and-so, yes, they're going through the same thing you're going through. They're battling cancer. They're battling a car wreck. Their son was an accident, and their daughter's an accident. Week after week after week, week after week after week. Other little ships. Now these, and when they used the word ship, <laughs> it wasn't like a ship. It's a little boat. Wasn't big at all. So tonight, you need to understand this that you're never going to face anything by yourself. You may fear, that's okay. You may be faithless, that's okay. Understand this, we have a fascinating God. Right. Amen. Just remember that. The new year is coming. We don't know what it holds, but we sang that song this morning. We know who holds our future. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen, Brother Bobby. Yes, sir. Thank God for that. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I hope the message tonight has, has, has sunk into the hearts here. For Lord, I don't know tonight who needed this message. It could be somebody tonight is in a storm. Somebody in the building, somebody listening by live stream that's in a storm right now. Lord, I pray you'll help them. I pray, God, you help them not to be afraid and, God, that you'll give them strength. Now, bless the invitation. In thy name I pray. Amen.